You're watching WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon. Welcome back to WKYT News. We've just hit 1230 and we just can't seem to get rid of these storms. Another line of showers and storms set to move through this afternoon. We're under a WKYT first alert severe weather day because today's weather brings a threat for flooding. Let's get an update now from meteorologist Micah Harris. You know, our main concern is flooding. Flash flooding. We're under that flash flood watch in effect through tonight for Central South eastern zones, but also we just can't roll out an isolated severe storm along the, along the way. Now you will get strong storms. There's no doubt about that. A lot of heavy rain once again, and also a lot of lightning too. So as this pushes on through, you're going to get strong storms, possibility of an isolated severe threat, and also that possible flash flooding. That's what we need to be really watching out for. Hit and miss storms move in. Remember, let's break down the timing once again for you guys. 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. is when these pop up thunderstorms kind of move on through. And you'll start to see that in the southern half of our viewing area uh, within the hour. Then we look back toward the west, and here comes some severe storms and some strong severe storms, that is, crossing over the Mississippi River, heading our direction. You'll start to see that anywhere from 5 p.m far western half to about midnight all the way to the eastern zone. So during that time is the time you'll really start to see some of these storms ramp up. I'm going to go through that. I'm going to show you what's finally behind that that I think a lot of people will be happy about. And I'll have that in just a few minutes. All right. Hope it's clear skies. Thank you. A teenager is now charged as an adult in a deadly shooting. Lexington police say the 15-year-old shot and killed a man in a parking lot on Oxford Circle back in December. The teen appeared in court today where police outlined the case against him. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has our report. It's the top story here at 1230. Hillary? The murder case against a Lexington teenager is moving forward after today a judge inside of circuit court denying his attorney's request to dismiss the case. 15-year-old Christopher Bravo is being tried as an adult in the December shooting death of 20-year-old Andre Soto Jr. In court today, prosecutors outlining their case against Bravo to prove there is evidence backing up their claim that the 15-year-old is responsible for the shot that killed Soto. A detective going over what led up to the deadly shooting, explaining there had been a couple of verbal altercations earlier in the evening, possibly between two gangs. While they say Bravo was present, they agree he was not involved in those arguments. However, his cousin was at the first and even called police, saying he was going to kill someone that night. Later on, they say Chris was driving his girlfriend in a van over to a taco stand off of Oxford Circle, where there was a group of people, including one who was involved in those earlier altercations. Investigators say the team saw that man who was standing next to the victim pull a gun and hold it at his side. However, Bravo telling detectives he never pointed the gun at him. However, because he saw the gun, his attorneys claiming the 15-year-old acted in self-defense, something detectives said he did make a statement about when being interviewed. Prosecutors, however, then pointing out the fact that the teen also made statements that he fired that shot to scare the group of people. Which Argued or a completely different claim from self defense. Now, ultimately, the judge finding today that there is not enough to grant Bravo immunity in the case at this point on those grounds of self defense. He did, however, say that argument of self defense could come up at a later date. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you, and Bravo will be back in court on June 17th. Police have cited a mother they say left her two young children home alone. Two men say they spotted a four-year-old alone in front of a store in the Winburn neighborhood around 8 o'clock this morning. They stopped and called police. When officers arrived, they say the boy walked them a quarter mile back to his home where they found a two-year-old alone in a crib. Thinking about my kids, you know. I mean, what mother leaves a kid out there like that? Now, police say the children's mother, Kimberly Strajan, told them she was taking her oldest child to school and a neighbor was supposed to be watching the others. Police cited her for endangering the welfare of a minor and contacted social services. A school bus driver accused of driving under the influence has pleaded not guilty. Brian Fletcher was arraigned in Montgomery County this morning. Police arrested him last month outside Camargo Elementary. His next hearing isn't until September because the court is waiting on blood tests before moving forward. Fletcher has been suspended from the Montgomery County School District with pay. 
There are some new details out this afternoon in a deadly crash. 23-year-old Sarah Cottle died last Sunday after another car crashed into hers on Highway 32 in Rowan County. Police have charged the other driver, Sabra McCarthy, with murder and wanton endangerment. Now, we've obtained an arrest citation that says McCarthy was under the influence at the time of the crash. Her passenger was taken to UK Hospital with injuries as well. One of the victims of a crash on Interstate 75 has died. The Fayette County Coroner says 56 year old Michael Callia died from blunt force trauma at UK Hospital yesterday. Callia and two others were injured in a six car pileup at the Northern Split in Lexington on Saturday. Callia was from Canada. A woman who didn't show up for work died in a car crash. State police say 54 year old Carla Mundy ran off a Taylor County road and into several trees. Mundy's family reported her missing yesterday after she didn't show up for work the day before. State police say they found her body and her car after an extensive search of the route she takes to work. An early morning fire has destroyed a Lincoln County home today. The fire started around 4 o'clock on Darst Street in Stanford. There was no one inside the home. It caught fire, and firefighters say they don't know if anyone does live there. Both Stanford and Lincoln County fire stations were called out to help. This has been a very difficult fire to put out. Uh, the house, of course, is an older house. Uh, it has three different roofs on it two shingle roofs, one metal roof, uh, a couple ceilings. Dar Street had to be closed to traffic while firefighters fought the fire. No one was hurt. A federal court has denied a former coal executive's emergency request to delay his prison sentence. Don Blankenship is scheduled to start serving one year today, but he wanted it delayed so that his appeal would have time to be heard. He received the sentence after a jury found him guilty of willfully violating mine safety standards at the Upper Big Branch Mine in West Virginia. The coal mine exploded in 2010, killing 29 men. A frightening discovery for a central Kentucky family. A large hole is forming right in their front yard, and they think it's only getting larger. Now the possible sinkhole is located on Fork Church Road near Lancaster in Garrett County. WKYT's Phil Pendleton talked with the homeowners about their concerns. I spoke with relatives of the people that actually live in this home. It's a family with children, and obviously there is a great deal of concern over what happened yesterday. The people that were inside the home actually heard something strange outside, and then they came outside to see the hole forming. Now, since yesterday, they say the hole has gotten a lot bigger. You can look down in it and see and hear water. It appears that the hole goes under Fork Church Road, Toward a large field. We had a lot of rain last night, and today we come back and it's. It's probably twice as big as it was yesterday. Yes. And the people tell me they really don't know what to do. What do you do about a sinkhole? Who do you call? How do you fix this? The landlord apparently is planning on putting some rock, some gravel, some dirt to try to fill the hole. But when you look down and you see how far it goes down, how deep it is, and how far back this way it goes, a lot of questions. What do you do now? We hope to have a lot more on this coming up later today, but for now, in Garrett County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Now, so far, the hole has not caused any damage to the home. Well, for National Tourism Week, why not seek out some local spots instead of traveling out of state? The benefits of a staycation this summer ahead on WKYT. Also, comedian Josh Sneed is performing at Comedy Off Broadway. The Cincinnati native is with us today. All about the thunderstorms the next 24 hours, and then once we move that on out, then we're talking about beautiful weather for your Friday. Maybe even some frost for the weekend. We got a lot to talk about. It's coming up next. If you're trying to get out and about and knock out some plans outdoors, maybe heading off to the grocery store, heading to wherever it may be, trying to get the kids outside, take the dogs around, around the neighborhood, the one thing you want to do is try to time out these storms. Let me help you with that. Down toward the south, coming out of Tennessee, I would say southern half, anywhere from the Cumberland Parkway, also the Howe Rogers Parkway in southbound, you have about an hour to an hour and a half before these storms move on in. Then you're looking across central zones, central zones, I-64 corridor, you have about two to three hours before we start to see storms move on in. And then northbound, we have quite some time before we start to see storms nudge in here. So you still have some time, 
but you better get out and about and do it while you can because we'll start to see some storms spark up. And look at the heat of the day 77 degrees right now in Richmond. We're going to finish off in the lower 80s once it's all said and done. Not only that, but those dew points are way up too. You can feel it outside. When you step outside, it's kind of humid. It's kind of sticky, right? So you know something's on the way, even though it is May, and it should kind of feel like that. But a marginal risk across our viewing area. This is an update. This is a new map from the Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. So if, if you want to see where the best chance of severe weather lies, still lies back toward Bowling Green. And then for us, marginal risk, meaning low end severe weather risk, meaning isolated chances. I mean, we're talking no widespread severe weather. But it's not really, I talked about it this morning, it's not really the severe storms I'm worried about because I didn't expect widespread severe storms today. Isolated chances here and there, it's the heavy downpours that you can get even with non severe storms. You're going to give it a lot of heavy rain out of these and also a lot of lightning. I hate lightning. You just don't know where it's going to strike. So uh, those are two things that we do not need today, especially that rain hitting the ground. Ground's already saturated and uh, we could have that flood watch uh, be in effect through tonight. We could have some flash flood warnings once it's all said and done. That's something to watch as we head throughout the evening and night. Tomorrow, finally a break. We get a break. It looks good. It feels good in the 70s. You got to love it. Saturday, only a couple of showers. They're pretty chilly right around 60 degrees. No washout by any means. And then Sunday, possible frost in the forecast. We're talking temperatures there in the upper 30s once it's all said and done. That's a possibility, okay? We're still four days away. And if we have the clouds sticking around Saturday night, then we won't get into the 30s. So it just all depends on a few things. But there's your possibility, okay? Green thumb alert going ahead and letting you know four days out that uh, you need to go ahead and think about getting those plants inside, mm. getting those plants ready. We're talking about frost, yeah. guys. Oh. Barb, your, your, your beautiful flowers. Mm, are here we go. I know. Right? What a hor uh, horrible thing. But we'll see. We'll, <laughs> She's been we'll looking make it at through. me pretty mad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Keep we'll it. Cover them and take yeah. care of them. Keep it here, right on WKYT. We're back in a moment. No shortage of entertainment, and you don't ever have to leave Kentucky. So much to do as we celebrate National Tourism Week. Details coming up on WKYT. And we welcome you back to WKYT News at Noon. There are so many things to see and do right here in the Commonwealth in our own backyard. And this is National Tourism Week, and you're encouraged to take advantage of what our great state and city have to offer. To talk more about it, we're joined by Nikki Goldie, the Director of Communications at Visit Lex, along with Iverson Griffin, a server at OBC Kitchen. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you Appreciate so much. It. Great to be here. You know, and the other thing is the economic impact of staying in Kentucky is amazing. Talk about that just a little bit. Absolutely. The State Department of uh, Travel and Tourism just released numbers earlier this week, and for the first time ever, uh, travel and tourism spending in Fayette County only topped $2 billion, which is uh, really phenomenal. And I think a lot of people out there might not realize that it contributes that much to our economy. And dollars that turn over and over in the community. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Now, Iverson. And I know that you uh, won one of the Servants Service Excellence Awards at the inaugural Lexington Hospitality Awards. What does that mean to you? Uh, yes, ma'am. It means a lot because it just is a testament to all my training and everything that we did at Bluegrass Hospitality. Um, you know, polishing and doing everything, you know, doing all the small things. And it's not about all the small things, but actually finding out about someone, asking them about their day. It's not just a job to you. Exactly. And, and, and what does it mean to you to have that kind of interaction with uh, guests, who, whether they're local or they've come uh, in from somewhere else oh, to, to be a part of the I beer? love, love people coming in from other places because they get to learn something new about Kentucky and to show them a little bit of the southern hospitality that we're so known for. Um, means everything. These are all of the award winners, uh, by the way, a picture here. And, a very uh, happy group there. Yeah. Uh, Nikki, how can locals take part in travel and tourism in Lexington's bluegrass region? Where do they get started to find these really great things to do? Sure, one of the best uh, places to get started is on our website at visitlex.com backslash staycation. We've created some itineraries that are um, kind of uh, dedicated to different areas of interest. So if you have a, a family with big kids or a family with small kids, we've kind of done the homework for you and told you, 
maybe check out these places, or if you're a nature lover, um, that you know, makes it so easy. Out. It does. That's a great yeah, way to do very it. easy. Are you sometimes stunned by uh, talking with people who uh, just don't do things that are right here in their backyard? You know, they they haven't been to the horse park, or they haven't been to some of the uh, uh, the attractions locally. Absolutely, yeah. It's not something that happens just here in Lexington. Certainly, something that happens in destinations all across the U.S. And that's what makes Travel and Tourism Week so exciting because we really get to talk to our locals in our communities about what makes us special and what draws people in to come see us. Well, it's a good excuse to get out there and do great things that you may have been putting away. Come out and visit Iverson. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Right. Right. And you keep representing the Commonwealth well because oh. uh, they take away those impressions as well when they're here. Appreciate Thank you me. coming. Thank Next, he's quickly making his mark as one of the top young comics in the business. Comedian Josh Schneed is here next on WKYT. Welcome back in, and it's great to have you with us on WKYT. After quitting a comfy day job at Procter & Gamble in Cincinnati, he's making big strides in following his passion for making people everywhere laugh. And he's making his mark as one of the top young comics in the business anywhere. We're happy to have comedian Josh Schneed with us. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you for having me back. One of the fun things, this is one of the uh, clubs where you started, and this is sort of your home area. Yeah, I actually live at the club upstairs, and uh, once a year I come down <laughs> to do the shows. Right. They let me out. I see the daylight. But <laughs> Unlock the door and let yeah, you yeah, out yeah. there. No, I'm from Cincinnati, so, uh, you know, when I got started and I still had the day job at Procter & Gamble, I was, you know, driving down here to just get a few minutes of stage time and, uh, you know, it's it's special to remember like this being one of the places I started, and now you know I'm I'm headlining. So. Sure, and that has to be a great feeling. What's your show like when people come out? Uh, it's it's pretty. Uh, it's not dirty. Uh, you know, there uh, PG-13 is how I like to describe it. You know, because a lot of people they don't know what they're getting into. It's such a roll of the dice when you go to a comedy show. But I don't pick on people. You know, I don't jump around. I don't. Uh, I don't curse a whole lot. And uh, I, you know, being from here and living here still, I talk about a lot of things that I think people in Lexington will relate to. You know, Midwest living. You know, wife, kids. You know, that sort of thing. Um, so you know, no puppets. I don't. I don't <laughs> hypnotize people. It's just. It's good joke writing that uh, that I think people will get a kick out of if good, they come out. Fun. And you said yeah. not a lot of politics either. Zero <laughs> politics. I, I, <laughs> that's saying, on you, purpose. You crack a joke and, and half the crowd walks out these days. Everybody's so <laughs> uptight about uh, this election year. Yeah, you know, right? I get enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to put on uh, on Twitter that they people should come out and tell me who I should vote for because I don't get enough of that on Facebook. <laughs> but uh, but we do cover pretty much everything on Facebook these days so let's just take a break from it come out and just we'll all agree to laugh at the same things for a couple hours I think that's very good how has it changed to being a dad uh, it's changed me a lot honestly uh, it's been a blessing to be able to to have a comedy career without having to live in New York or Los Angeles so raising a family in the place that I grew up and in the Midwest you know is has been a has been very nice and uh, my son is he's almost five and we have a daughter coming in three weeks so oh, hopefully that'll be a whole new album right there <laughs> and, uh, it will be. Yeah. your chance to uh, catch Josh Sneed out at comedy off Broadway this weekend thanks for coming hey, thanks Thank you. let's check with Micah before we go our weather yeah and our weather you're seeing all these spotty hit and miss storms to the south of us that actually moves northbound uh, through the 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. so here in just the next few minutes you'll see it cross over southern Kentucky the first storms so 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. with that and then the main line guys 5 p.m. to midnight we'll keep you updated on air and online our next newscast is coming up at 4 thanks for joining us today make it a great day everybody